This is what I'm at left. I did a bit of a build update, I think two nights ago. And I thought I'd do another one. Since then, there's been a bunch more people getting into Gon. And just in chat, I've had 60 times today the same question. How do you sustain mana with Indigon? So I have since got Indigon. Uh, I now have real build damage. I'm up to like 8 million. Uh, clear's looking good. Stats are looking all right. I've had a pretty rough two days of RNG. Um, so not as far along as I'd have hoped. Just a lot of bad luck crafting. Um, but I'm going to go over just like a kind of another two-day benchmark brief character update. Maybe show a map, show some delve. You know, the other one was seven minutes. I'll probably be around that. But the biggest thing I'm going to address here is the mana. So uh, before I was not using an Indigon because they were a ton of money and they're still a ton of money. They will probably go down eventually, but so far they haven't. But uh, people who've been playing the build with just me all during the free cost. Um, two points to this with Indigon. So there's a bunch of new Archmage builds out there that aren't taking advantage of Indigon. And one of the easiest ways to do it with the new Archmage is with Mjolnir because it makes it free. But if, if it's free with Mjolnir, how do you take advantage of it? Well, the answer is it's your Castwind Channeling link. So this link right here has Castwind Channeling, Cyclone, with then Lightning Warp, Lesteration, whatever, Mana Leech, Calling Strike. So that is the spender. Uh, the whole build is modeled off of the original Mana Bomb build, where the chest is the spender. And that is what spends your mana for um, Indigon stacks. The Arcane Cloak begins the spend, gives you stacks, and then the chest cast when channeling is like right around that equilibrium point where it just keeps spending. So you pretty much just have to out-leech that or out-recover that. Um, there's three or four different ways to do that. And if you can do all of these things, then you get a nice 2,000% spell damage buff. And that's when this build just completely passes all the other mana builds. Like, any any Archmage build right now that isn't using Indigon, the second you start using Indigon properly, it will leave all those builds in the dust for damage. This is how the build scales to, you know, 100 mil plus. So, the big part here, though, is um, if you don't have a lot of good sources of mana recovery, you end up just being completely out of mana which leaves you really vulnerable to dying to chaos damage. If you have a gap in your core scanning elixir, it means that you can't use your lightning warp sometimes because you're out of mana. Uh, it means that you're, it, it, the whole loop just breaks down. If you're out of mana, everything's broken. Uh, so you need to be recovering mana. Um, of all the different things I've thought of, this is the one I've actually settled on. That's the best, that's the smoothest. And it, it addresses the two situations. In this game, you are either fighting something for a sustained period of time, like a boss, or you're just blasting and clearing monsters. And the setup I have right now covers all of those scenarios. It's felt really smooth. I've been playing it all day with pretty much zero issue. So, uh, unlike Mana Bond, let me D&D &D here. Unlike Mana Bond, you don't need to be low mana, which opens up Thrill Killer. If you played like the Righteous Fire setup last league, Thrill Killer is pretty much infinite mana when mapping. Because you're killing like 30 monsters per second when mapping fast. So this is just like infinite mana. I'll, I'll show you in a second here. You'll see. It's pretty much infinite mana. Um, so you, basically you'll cloak and immediately go back to full and you'll have no issues and that's it. The only thing is this doesn't really work when you're fighting a boss. So the other mechanic at play here is what you've been hearing my character yell every couple seconds. Uh, before I had this set up with Call to Arms an Enduring Cry, just to kind of like carry the build through the early stages. But I've swapped that around, I've kept the same setup with Call to Arms, but instead I have Battle Mage's Cry here. Essentially what this is, is the old Anomalous Mana Leech. Because this gives you your spell damage converted into attack damage, and it's automated, it's instant, it doesn't interrupt you, doesn't interrupt your Cyclone, doesn't interrupt your Mjolnir's cast, whatever. It's just perma uptime basically, and this makes it so that if you're near a boss, you're going to get Warcry power, so it's going to give you all this attack damage, and that's going to make your leech pretty much cap you. So any one-on-one -on -one single target boss scenario, unless it's got like crazy damage reduction, like some 100% delirium, like simulacrum with undergear or whatever, this is pretty much going to cap your leech perma. Um, so between these two things, you should be fine on mana. Obviously there could be some oddball cases where you, you get in trouble, but... Um, 98% of the time, these two things will cover your mana. So watch, uh, watch an example here some gameplay. I'm going to do this map. 
this is a good map because it has a guardian boss that has 34 million health and it's got like a map to actually fight so uh watch me just clear the map watch me cloak and watch my mana so you saw i dip down and i'm immediately back full and thrill killer is just carrying you just if you're if you're blasting you cannot have issues if you have thrill killer on you just have like perma man. Even right here, you see for a second there, there was like nothing to attack, but then by the time I hit something, I just perma capped again. So, Thrill Killer is just gonna carry. It is going to cap your mana situation. This is like, I picked the worst layout. The, all the other ones are like a straight linear loop. And this one's just terrible. Um, Alright, so then you have a boss scenario where this might be, this might die too quick to show off, but just kind of watch the mana, see if I can get a good, proper, like, uh, see if I can get. I'll wait to burn. Alright, so you see it? Watch the mana. See the leech bar where it's light blue? So, that kind of covers the single target. That wasn't even like the best setup there, and that was a pretty short boss, but um, with the Battle Mage's Cry on cycle and on single target, where you always have something you're hitting, that leech should carry. You still want to pay a little bit of attention to your indigon percentages. Like a 60 is just kind of too high. I have a 54 right now. I'd say in general you want to have be as low as possible or as uh, low as possible. So if you can get a 50, get a 50. But I'm making do right now with 54. It's fine. Uh, in some cases, a higher percentage is better because like if you can sustain the mana, then it's more spend, which is more damage. Um, but it's it's like a little bit quality of life to get closer to 50. But if you get in the mid 50s, it's if you're good at doing the mana loop, it's arguably more damage to have like a mid 50. But 60 is probably too high. It's gonna just oom you too much. So uh, that's kind of a good like you know mapping example. I'll show you a delve node real quick, just one of each, whatever. Uh, just keep kind of talking through it. I'm at depth like 350 now. It's going pretty easy right now. I was getting a little bit ZHP or ZDPS at like 300 before I got Indigon, and since I've got Indigon, uh, it's just been not an issue. Uh, I have more damage than they have health now, and it will probably continue that way till five or six hundred. But by then, I should have more upgrades and kind of outscale it. But yeah, Thrill Killer is carrying. It, it's it's all the mana I will need. I'm killing stuff rapidly, and it is perma capping. You'll you'll see me cloak and just immediately be full again. Uh, but even even in like I just did a boss. I did a Ahwatalti. I have a big HP sponge to always be hitting. I have Battle Mage's Cry. The Battle Mage's Cry is hitting unique monsters, so it's giving me 10 minimum stacks. And the Mana Leech is just fine. Like, I don't even have, like, a fully level, like, Mana Leech gem. I can obviously get more damage, and that helps. You know, you get, like, more cluster jewels. that give just generic lightning pen and stuff. And that's a lot more boss damage for the Cyclone because, like, you don't run lightning pen in the link, so you're just fighting 50 res. So if you pick up, like, a... You know, scintillating storm drinker. That's just 13 pen for your cyclone. It it gets it gets but like my point is is I just kind of swap the setup and this is the worst it's ever gonna look. Like as damage scales better, it's just gonna get more and more mindless and more and more like perma capped. And that's good even more so with this setup because before you had to actually manage both sides because if you were playing mana bomb before, you want to be empty mana during your damage phase. Um, this setup doesn't have, like, a down phase, really. It's pretty much full uptime on damage if you do the loop right, um, which is already kind of better in Mana Bond, even if the POB DPS looks similar. But then the other thing is, in Mana Bond, if you had too much leech, you'd lose all your damage because you'd just leech pack to full, and then you'd get no flat damage. In this setup, it doesn't matter at all. If you have too much leech, awesome. You just leech pack to full, and that's it. Like... So on Mana Bond before, you could get pun you had you, you get punished if you're too low, and you get punished if you're too high. On this setup, you get punished if you're too low, but you can go just full measures to fix it. And if you just overcorrect and go f go too much leech, no problem, no penalty. Um, a couple other methods you could use the foreboding Mana Flask like I have in the past that still works. I would say in general, you want to be doing two things. So my two things are the Battle Mage's Cry and thrill killer i think you can get away with battle mage's cry and foreboding because that kind of does what thrill, thrill killer does where if you have flash charges you have mana which is with your killing stuff i think you can get away with thrill killer and foreboding and no battle mage's cry if you want to keep enduring cry it's possible i think whatever you do you have to do two out of three things um but playing this way man situation has been fine 
but I've had questions on this all day, so hopefully I have like a you know eight minute video here to just kind of go over the progress update and how to fix the mana situation. I'll see you guys next time.